If you have a lot of self-hosted runners, you're going to want a way to organize them, especially for providing access control to specific repos or workflows. Enter Runner Groups. Let's look at how you can use Runner Groups to organize your self-hosted runners. Hey y'all, I'm Mickey Gousset, and today we are looking at how to use runner groups to organize your GitHub Actions self-hosted runners. You can define runner groups at both the enterprise and the organization level. For groups defined at the enterprise level, you can specify that the group can be accessed by all organizations, select organizations, or select workflows. For groups defined at the organization level, you can specify that the group can be accessed by all repos, select repos, or select workflows. Now, let's look at how we can create and configure a runner group. If you'll remember, when we installed the runner, we had to assign it to a group. Now, runner groups are ways to group your runners together so that you can assign them to specific repos and control who can access what runners. If I go to settings in my organization and I go to actions and I go to runner groups. Now this organization is not a member of an enterprise. So if you're not a member of an enterprise, you can't create groups. You just only get the default group for your self-hosted runners. But we can go into the default group to see what the options would be if we could create a new runner group. And the options, if we could create a new runner group, would be to give that group a name. We could say all repositories have access to this, to this group. Or we can specify just select repositories that have access to the group. And I can decide whether public repositories have access to the runners in the group. Now, usually you don't want to do this because it can introduce a, a significant security risk by allowing self-hosted runners on public repositories and workflows on public forks to um, be able to trigger. So in general, you want to, to not allow your, your runners access to public repositories. Now what's also nice though is in your groups, you can also control the specific workflows that a runner can access. So this allows you to say that the runners in this group can only be used by specific workflows. So in this case I'm saying any workflow cam, but I could say specific workflows and in th and I could list out the specific workflows. So I could say, you know, Mickey you say org slash workflow private slash whatever my, my runner name was. So you basically path it all the way down to the workflow and to either a particular version or a particular um, branch. So you can use branches, tags, or SHAs to say this specific, only this specific workflow can be used on these runners. So it's just another way for being able to control um, access. And then you can see I've only got one runner in this group right now, which is my GitHub runner. But that shows you some of the things you can do. If you did have multiple groups, then you could obviously you could specify each group has access only to certain repositories, or each group can only be executed on certain workflows, which allows you to parse out um, your runners, allows you to say some runners maybe are more secure and are only used for production deployments however you know whatever your your methodology may be i hope you've enjoyed this video on how to use runner groups to organize your self-hosted runners if so please comment and like this video subscribe to my channel and smash that bell to be notified of my next video thanks for watching